How's it going, everyone? Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about frequency because I've had a lot of concern, again, about the wire lengths and frequency and how this can be tuned or adjusted uh, to different frequencies. So this system is configured exactly how you'd want it to be uh, configured uh, to act in resonance. These two cores operating at the same frequency incorporating the earth ground here through this capacitor. So, um, okay, so this is basically right here determining the overall frequency of everything. Um, it does change when we hook up the earth ground. Now, if we wanted this, uh, we got to understand that a shorter wire is a higher frequency. So these are fairly long wires. There's actually 13 turns, I believe. I filled the spool. <laughs> I added one foot leads. And that's how I arrived at that coil. Now, um, so if you wanted to, you know, double the frequency that this thing operates at, you'd cut the wire length in half and uh, accommodate the coils, stick them right in the middle of each core, and uh, done. Now it's running at twice the frequency. Okay, so um, today one of my meters came in. I, I ordered a, uh, a handheld uh, frequency meter so I can find out what the field is operating at here so that I can then um, design a coil that would go between here and the source and that coil or length of wire <laughs> would be located in the field and it would receive wirelessly the energy to recharge itself and therefore make this device self-running uh, by tapping the field that's radiating out here. So to do that we have to know exactly what frequency this is operating at. Then we have to uh, make a uh, a tank circuit, a capacitor and a coil, or a capacitor, coil, and, re and a resistor uh, circuit uh, that operates at that frequency and place it in the field and uh, make that coil be our supply wire. Done. Okay, so um, it's a cool little meter. Anyways, it reads um, 10 hertz to 6 gigahertz so full spectrum there for quite quite a few quite a frequency range so I can uh, I can also use this to detect um, the EMP stuff but I want to kind of it's probably just going to screw it up but uh, I'm, so I'm going to get a Tesla meter a Gauss meter eventually here that I can uh, when it gets when I get to the output here uh, the disruptive discharge part of it stage two then we can uh, ha do uh, a length of wire and uh, coil it up in a helix and see what we get air core and uh, measure the gauss strength and then put that onto a ferrite core, that same length of wire on the ferrite, and we know that we're getting that much gauss strength minimum uh, in the ferrite. And then we can get an accurate reading on exactly how much power is coming out of it like it's gonna it's not gonna be anything for us to get large amounts of power out of these things so uh, this device here is running I guess right now with this length of wire like I said if I cut this in half it's gonna double the frequency that the whole thing comes into resonance at and um, uh, right now it's 22.9 kilohertz I think so we'll fire it up and uh, Okay, so we are running at 9 watts. You can see my meter. We have the field, so, you know, if we had our uh, proper length of wire, maybe made a, a decent-sized receiver, not sized, but a decent calculated receiver, resonant tank circuit, then we could uh, recharge ourselves there. There's the field. The field's everywhere here, right? So our frequency is 22.9 22.89 kilohertz so that's great then so now we have an exact reading on the frequency here you know it's the same frequency 
um, you know, 22.89 over here even, right? So, you know, you'd want your receiver somewhere at your source to tap this uh, transmitted field here at 22.9 kilohertz. And like I said, if you wanted to change the frequency, you're just going to change the length of these wires. If you add anything to this frequency, you're going to lower the frequency. So if you put a resistor in there or if you did, um, you know, anything other than shortening the wire. So it's the length of the wire determines the highest running possible frequency of the device. So I just wanted to show you the frequency here that we're running at. Now that we know what uh, these coils are running at, you would know what to tune your receiving coil at on your input to close loop it and uh, charge your battery. And you'd maybe want to make so many turns of wire with the right, right length in a coil and, uh, you know, or whatever you want. There's a lot of different ways you could put, you could wind a, a tank circuit here out of a pancake and have another, have this coil here that's going from the source to the thing in a pancake coil and just set your receiver on top of it. And uh, away it goes. Maybe you need some diodes, maybe, you don't, I don't know. <laughs> So much to play with here, but I just wanted to show you the frequency. And uh, there you go. All right. Lots of field all over the place. I don't know how far this transmits. Let's take this back here. Probably a little ways. Yeah, I'm probably about, well, five feet away from that coil. Let's see if I got any more space here. Oh, yeah. I am um, about eight feet away, so yeah, it transmits at quite the distance, just that way at nine watt consumption, open circuit. All right, guys, that's it. Wanted to show you the frequency, and there you go. Ciao.